Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed. The subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. Hello, hello. Sorry, I was changing the thread. I forgot to change the thingy. How are you all? I hope I have enough thread for today. I have like three half bobbins here. I thought I wound something. Anyway. <laughs> hello, Hannah. Hey, Delwyn. Hey, Shem. Hey, Bonnie. Hey, Anna. Kira, Margaret, Aisha. Ooh, look at all of you guys. Aussie. Elena, Danny, Sue, Laura. Wow. Welcome, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. Happy Thursday. Let's see. I was just arranging my pieces. Here's our, our um, shirt here. Okay, so I'm, um, I have two really silly things to say. <laughs> First of all, how did none of you notice that the title of the stream yesterday was incorrect? I wrote, um, I think Ellison, not Ellsworth. Every time I type the name of the shirt, it autocorrects for me. Um, and um, I didn't catch it on both of my live stream titles. Someone in the comments said, hey, I've searched for this. It's wrong. So thank you for telling me that. Um, the other funny thing is that I have... Like when I first saw this fabric they sent me, I was like, ooh, this is very, very like traditional Christmas colors, you know? So I'm gonna save it till the end of the year. <clears throat> and it wasn't until I looked at the fabric and it's inspired by watermelon colors. How well does Hearts know me? How the, I, I am like watermelon's biggest fan. So I just, I love that. I love that they picked this plaid, <laughs> it's watermelon. <laughs> it makes me love it even more. So um, anyway, yeah. Hey Marilyn, hey Libby. <laughs> Hey, Raquel. Yeah, I put L. Ellison, <laughs> not Ellsworth. <laughs> this, is, this is it, see, Ellsworth. So this is what we're making, and I pulled up the other size package option. This is the six to 18. There's another size package. They only overlap by one size. Um, Malin in the chat told us that yesterday. Hey, Amy. Amy. And she happens to be that size and she says they're both different blocks. So it's, I think it made her really indecisive. If she's here, she can tell us more. But um, here, I'm gonna show you the other one. Um, it, it's gotta be on the Merchant and Mills site. And I have to admit, I, did, I, I didn't see it linked in the description of this one here on the Merchant and Mills site. I have to admit, I did not search far. But I will also say, I shouldn't have to. It should be right there. 
for our other size category, and maybe it is and I missed it, so I'm really sorry, but here you go. Here is a few other photos in the other size range. It's really cute. This is the line drawing here. Um, and so this one goes from 18 to 28, whereas this one goes 16 to 18. So size, whoa, well, let's see if we can read this. I can't see chat right now, so I'll, I'll welcome you. Okay, these are finished measurements. We would really like the size chart. Here we go, here's the size chart. All right, so it goes from a 42 and a half inch bust <laughs> to 55 inch, and then the hip, this is the hip, it goes to a 57 and a half inch hip. This is a person's measurements, not the shirt, um, a 45 inch, down to a 45 inch hip in this size range. Um, it's it's very much a loose shirt, so obviously, like, look at the bust, sleeve, back link, front link, cuff, where's the hip? All right, well, the bust finished 65 to 78 and three quarters, because it's, it's like a flat boxy shirt. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with y'all. Let me find my chat again. Oh, the bicep area. <laughs> yeah, right, Elena? Right. I would kept reading it that way, too. Yeah, the Merchant and Mill site, not a fan. Sorry, I'm just not a fan. Um, the, bi the finished bicep is not listed. <laughs> There's a cuff circumference, and the cuff is like three-quarter length, um, and the cuff is... 14 and a half to 18 and a half. So yeah, there's no finished bicep, but I would be happy to measure this one when we're done. And this is the 14, if that gives you any help at all. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, Ashi Chic, that, that it's watermelon, that's so cool. <laughs> Hi, Mullen. I was just showing the other size range and how you fall on the top end of this one and the bottom end of that one and that you haven't purchased it because of that, right? Because it's like hard to tell because it's different blocks. So we were just talking about that. Okay, so um, I gotta get going here. I gotta get sewing because we're finishing this today. We don't have to set in sleeves. That saves us a, set, a step, but we do have a few little details to do. All right, so the next thing is um, it's to do the hem facings, but I honestly think you can just do that at the end when you do the whole hem, because what they have you do is attach the hem facing, but you don't finish it. You like stop your stitching right here. So my eye, I don't want to back tack here, here, and then on the back two more, like four back tacks. I, I guess you'd still have it. I want to continue, so I'm going to go around the vent and around the whole hem facing. I'm going to do a continuous really clean, so. Yeah, no problem, Raquel. Yeah. I think that um, for those of you that um, don't get to come to the Ask a Zoe question show, there's one thing that for me personally has really highlighted the differences between websites. Because what we do is everyone pins all the newest released patterns on a Pinterest board. And then we look at the Pinterest board together. And then I pull up every pattern and we talk about it. We talk like, okay, do we see, what do we see here? What's the sizing? Um, are there, are we looking and seeing potential fit issues that are consistent across all the people who've made it so far? Um, it's a very, it's a much more, I'm much more candid there than I am here. Um, and they, they love it. They, you know, um, and the one thing though that drives me crazy is visiting all the different websites and it's really shined a light on how hard some of them are to use um, and look at the information. So yeah, right Libby? I agree. Some people do, but you might have to like look at their blog post, right? So why couldn't it just be right here on the packet? <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't want them to use a pear or an apple, but at the same time, like some information would probably be helpful when people are straddling ranges, right? 
like the, the 6 to 18 block was based on the size 12 and the size 12 measures this. And we, we chose a um, softer hourglass shape for this block, right? That, I feel like that would be helpful, right? Whereas you could say for our 18 to 28 range, we chose a more of a round silhouette, a circle silhouette, and the base size is the 22 which measures blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think Cashmere is the only one I've seen too. I think there's other people who have, but. Yeah, Elena, exactly. I personally have been over that for a long time. And so before you think, well, that's because you're 50 years old. Let me just tell you something. That aesthetic is not new. And it's been around since my 30s. <laughs> when it was really hip for all the 30 year olds now <laughs> I'm over it I want usability without judgment <laughs> yeah that's true Libby I mean we could look at that you let's let's do it let's just do it really quick we'll look at the 18 all right let me bring you guys up you're, you're coming with me uh, let me pop out my chat so I can see you guys Hey, Terry. How's it going? Nice to see you. I'm sorry, my um, camera is, is pointing there. There. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. For the finished measurements, <clears throat> I'm going to do this so I can make this as big as possible. And we're going to also increase the um, size of the screen here. I'm not, I'm not gonna make any promises that it will help things, but we'll see. So this is the finished measurement chart. Let's just look at the bust. So the bust finished measurements is 65 to 78 and three quarters. So it's 65, so we're looking at the 18. 65 and the neck is 18 and three quarters. Here's the other one. Bust 18. What did I say? Was it 65? This one's 64 and a half. So they're a half inch different in bust. So the 18 is larger um, in this size range. Distracted, tangent. Yeah, I know that the bicep is hard to measure, but um, it's not that hard. You know what I mean? The The thing about this is that the bicep on this is going to be right here. Can you see that? So the bicep is not down here. Your shoulder line is like right here and it goes here. So the bicep is in here. So um, it's going to be pretty forgiving for a bicep. All right, so I don't know how much that helped, but... Um, Tangent over. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Where's my chat? Restore chat. I said restore chat. Okay. All right. So no, 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 no. We need all the thread we can get. Please don't do that. All right, so um, we have quite a few details to do today, but we're gonna we're gonna get to it. So, like I said, the next step would normally be the hem facing, but I think you could do that at the end, and then they won't be kind of flopping around in the way. We'll just do it uh, all at once with the hem. Yeah, exactly, Raquel. Yeah, the cuff is closer fitting, so um, it does taper quite a bit pretty quickly. All right. So shoulders, we're going to do the shoulders next. So here's our front. Are we too zoomed in? Not quite, right? 
Here's our back. And this is great because I kind of want to get this so that I can tell right from wrong side <laughs> right away. <laughs> and we established there's no pleats on this cuff, which is kind of cool actually, but it does mean that it could taper a lot. All right, so let's make sure that this is the wrong sides together. All right, I didn't, I really didn't spend a lot of mental effort on my plaid matching, so we'll see how we did. It already looks very, oh yeah, look at that. It's the opposite. It's the opposite, you guys, look. <sighs> All right, so this is a really good, like, a lesson. When you're plaid matching something like this, the shoulders, what you need to do, uh, when it's one way, when it's one way, I don't really want to get into this right now, um, because this shirt would have been, it would have been, made more sense to cut it like this upside down so that we could have gotten the plaid correct. This is, this is exactly why I say you cannot match all plaids and sometimes you just got to let it go, right? But let's say that you did that, then it would be upside down on the side seams. So, all right. Because we laid this down and we cut it that way, it is not gonna work. Womp womp. All right, so we're gonna um, do fringe seams here. Did you really come unthreaded? What are you guys all working on? I'm kind of surprised you're all like, like, you know, it's a good crowd, I'm happy. My last stream for like a couple weeks too. So when you do the this, um, sorry, I'm struggling because it's a lot of fabric here. When you do a fringe seam like this, you see how there's this angle winging out right there? You need to line this up on the full seam allowance line right here, right? So this is the seam line right here. Even though we're not gonna sew that right now because we're doing a fringe seam, we're gonna sew like right, right here. If, because if you don't, what'll happen is when you finally go finish your whole seam, you'll have a really serious jog at the neckline and you'll have to trim away from your neck. Yeah, right, Shim? Knitting fingerless mittens, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, cool, Shim. Oh, cool, Malin. Cleaning up hot line. <laughs> it was a mess. Uh, I love that you took those pictures. Hey, Aisha, how's it going? <laughs> Oops, I just whacked the microphone. Sorry about that. This has, this fabric has slight stretch, so I'm just being really careful to not let it get kind of crazy. Knitting a hat. Not currently stitching, but the every sermon I have has been working on giving my nutcracker cost. Your nutcracker cost. Wait, you're in it. You're in the play too, Anna. That's pretty cool. TLC is nice on handmaids, you know. All right. I got, I've been getting tagged a little bit with some of the, the little things I do on Instagram and one of the more popular little like reels I did, I don't focus a lot of time on reels. I've been experimenting with it more as a way to um, look at the monetization on there because the monetization on Instagram is really good right now. Um, you're not gonna like make a living unless you're like big, but um, as far as like, comparing apples to apples with YouTube shorts and Instagram. Instagram is trying to compete hard right now. So it's really good, it won't last like that. But, um, so I've been playing around with it. But anyway, one of my reels, the one that's doing, that does really, has done really good is the one where I talk about plaid matching at the shoulders. <laughs> so I'm like, it's not possible. <laughs> Stop saying it's possible. All right, um, I'm gonna just trim this edge a little bit here, but I think I wanna do it, 
I'll just do it right here. It'll, it would be faster to use a rotary knife right here. We're just gonna trim off a little bit of these little threads so they don't stick out of my seam. Oh, you are, Aisha? You're gonna make a, the Merriam? Cool. I took apart my front waist yesterday during workshop. I'm gonna lower it. And Rachel did a muslin too, so she's on the way with hers. Your party mom doing the video. Oh, how fun. Your party mom. <laughs> You cut your upland trousers muslin. Nice. You were really focused on, on those then. <laughs> That's cool. I saw you became a channel member. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Didn't need to do that. You're already a guild member. It's an old costume. Oh, altered many times. Yeah. Okay, so let's go and iron this. Oh, you are. Cool. I think that this would be a good one for the that method, for the top-down center out method. I think it would be a good one. I think any kind of loose pant is so great with that method. All right. How painful is that plaid matching to look at? Hearts is like, this might be a good opportunity for plaid matching. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm going to send them. <clears throat> I, I now I just want to stop everything and record a whole video about how you would want, if you wanted to match this, how you'd have to go about it. Because it would be kind of hard. Something's got to give. I always tell that funny story with the, the guy I worked for who was dead set on matching pleats, a pleated skirt to a bodice on women's and children's dresses that were plaid. He wanted to match the pleats to the plaid of the bodice on every single size. Mind you, I was probably 19 years old and even I knew, I didn't know how to articulate it, but I was like, I don't think that's actually physically possible. And he was driving himself crazy trying to get it to work. I worked for his, for his he and his wife at this company. And um, I just said, yeah, I don't think that that's physically possible. Like it'll probably work on like one size every few sizes like it'll probably work on like say the six and then it won't work again until you get to the 12. like i i'm not like a math genius at all but um there's certain things that i understand with, and i don't know how i understand them you know what i mean like i could never explain it i don't know formulas or anything you do a lot of geometry and pattern drafting um without knowing it and so i just knew i was like yeah but you know, what if this bolt of tartan was woven when they changed out the threads and that it's like the tiniest bit tighter, that's going to change. Like you, you just, it's just not possible. Right. And he, in his, this is my, my story always ends with him saying, cause he was a former engineer for a, um, a big airline, like, like not airline, the people who make air, um, airplanes. Right. And, and, and like, space things and stuff like I look at listen to me I sound terrible I don't know what I'm talking about but he was like Sammy I put parts on the moon I can make this match and I was like okay <laughs> you know so yeah anyway <laughs> okay so um you would sham exactly Oh, that's so exciting, Kira. Ooh. New sewing room, new you. <laughs> All right, so we're just enclosing that raw edge now with our French seam here. 
And I, for me, that story is particularly funny. Like, as I thought back on it, like, as I learned more and got gained more experience, I left working there, by the way, eventually. It was, like, passively really toxic to work there. And, and I never worked for another husband and wife team again. Like, I, I actually did. And then after that, I was like, I'm never working for a husband and wife again. Like, it was too much. Um, and um, I just think, like, in retrospect, now that I have the, the experience... How could he, an engineer who'd put parts on the moon, not understand why that was impossible? So, <laughs> you know. Um, I don't think he was willing to hear a 19-year-old tell him he was wrong, Raquel, if you get my drift. The wife was super sweet. <laughs> And he was always right. <laughs> yeah, and they, they were, oh, God, I can tell you so many stories about this company. And if you ever watch my little intro on YouTube after, like, my current intro on YouTube, which I should probably update again, um, it has, like, a whole, like, montage of the things I've done there are these pictures from working there. It was a mother-daughter dresswear company, and they used me in the catalog, you guys. I was 19, and I had in the pictures in the catalog, I had like a 10 and an 8-year-old. Even I was like, I don't want to be in the catalog. Like, I was just like, I don't want to be in the catalog, you know. And they, like, styled me in their way and everything, you know. Um... But I put those pictures in there because they're funny. You know, it is kind of funny. But he would actually be, he was kind of insulting and, and a little bit like, um, well, he was misogynist. Um, but he um, would, he, was, he would make like these passive cracks about it. And I'm like, dude, I'm not a mom. I don't want to be in this catalog. So stop making fun of me for looking like this like I was just like you're the one putting me in this position it was awful anyway what was the problem with working for a husband and wife team <laughs> um there were a lot of problems with it I, it's just like they can't hang that that relationship status up at the door when they walk in sometimes and I didn't really need to be in the middle of that We can talk about it if you want. <laughs> yeah. Elena said it very well. I, um, I, like I said, I really like the wife. Their daughter was a, a, a little bit tough to be around, <laughs> but she was young. <laughs> and I was young and not a, a parent or very understanding. <laughs> okay, see how my, my seam right here is a little uneven? I'm just going to trim this up while I'm sitting here. I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit and, and trim down that seam allowance poking out there. Um, I really thought that they were a really happily married couple too, and they, they did end up falling apart way after me, you know, unfortunately. So he used to really make fun of where my parents lived and where I went to high school. It's like, I don't have a choice in that. I was a kid, right? I don't like that kind of thing. When people make fun of you for things that are totally out of your control, I just have no respect for someone like that. And that's something I've always had a really good handle on growing up because I was really, really busty. I've had a breast reduction. I've openly talked about this. Um, making fun of someone for how they're born or how they look or what they have to deal with, what kinds of things they have to do in life, for things that are completely out of your control, I have no respect for someone like that. I'm willing to work with them to make them a better person or to under make them understand why it's inappropriate to do that. But I wouldn't put up with it. So, all right. Let me, um, let me do the collar. Collar time. All right, so we voted um, in the chat yesterday to do some bias 
touches and we did the placket on the front here as a bias touch which I actually think was a really good call I love the way the bias looks there it does you see the placket on there um, and we're going to do a bias cuff but Shim threw out there hey I love doing a bias collar stand on the inside so we're going to do that as well so I have this bias collar stand the first thing we're going to do though is we're going to sew our collar together it's a lot of shirts just falling off so All right. All right, so this has a top collar and an under collar. Let me trim down my seam allowance or my uh, interfacing here. And so the under collar should be a little smaller, so I'm going to put it on top. I'm just going to line it up to these edges here. I also cut down my seam allowance to a quarter of an inch on all edges. I think I'm gonna run out of thread. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's the case for all family run businesses, Aisha, but I, um, I hate to say this, but I've known so many that I've worked for. My husband was just working for one. Um, Every single one of them was never a really great place to work if you weren't in the family, you know? And there they were just taking advantage of me being young and more educated than them, but I still wasn't. I was still in college, you know? I just naturally understood a lot of things in this like in doing garment construction and stuff. Um, I was just lucky that this kind of thing came really easily to me, but I didn't understand all of it. Like I wasn't an expert in it or anything. I'm just looking for a bobbin right now, any kind of bobbin that'll match. This doesn't quite match. Maybe I should just wind one. I think I'm just gonna wind a bobbin. Sorry guys. They only give me one spool of thread, so I'm kind of fighting for, um, using it here. Yeah, that's a good point, Shem. Okay. I hate trying to thread my my um cradle, my thread cradle. From Oh, there we go. <laughs> I had to like reach over. There's no thread to pull it through. Oh wait, what's this bobbin right here? Is this what I, oh, 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 you guys, I have a bobbin. I knew I had given myself a bobbin. Oh, yay, okay. Yeah, he would have been a problem boss anyway. It didn't help that. Oh, the other thing I should mention, Aisha, is that the business was in their home. It's really hard to even pretend to have any kind of separation from that status when you're living, when they're, you're in their home, so. Oh no, Mullen. We gotta give her some rips in the chat. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. There's no reason for him to insult me about anything. <laughs> was just that way when I got a little older and some distance from that company when I left it was really hard like the wife cried which was really hard because I got had gotten pretty close with her and she and I worked side by side the whole time and they you know their business grew a little bit and they ended up moving to this little town I lived in which was really convenient for me but also I was kind of like why are you moving to this little town you know <laughs> Um, and, um, when I left, she cried and then I just like, I didn't even give two weeks. Like there was no way I could, I knew I couldn't give two weeks. He would have badgered me. And so I set up everything. I got another job and everything. And then I was like, I'm, you know, um, I'm leaving, you know, and it, cause it had gotten kind of bad. And, um, a few years later, uh, when the whole Facebook thing came out, like when Facebook came around. I got friend requests from her and I just was like, well, that's it was just so awkward, you know? And so I didn't ever accept them. But ironically, you guys, 
they ended up moving to the town my parents lived in that they made fun of me for where I went to high school. Because his mom lived there. That's how he knew about it. They moved there. I think because they lost the business and everything. So they had to kind of regroup somewhere. But they got a divorce. And that's when she was asking to be my friend on Facebook. And I just didn't want to have them in my life. I didn't know that. So I would have totally accepted it had I known that. And now I just, I don't know where they're at. So anyway. <laughs> At-home business, yeah, exactly. My wife talked to me about work at home when I was always trying to figure that out. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> That's a hard one. All right, so we have our collar and our um, under collar sewn together here. And this is a stretchy fabric. Like, I'm definitely trying not to stretch it as I sew. This little, this fabric would look so cute in so many different patterns. I can think of like the Deer and Doe Melolo. That would, this would be really cute as in that, this fabric. Cause that, that's a little, like a little stretch would be nice. The blue A dress. Oh, well, that's plaid. I mean, this is plaid. The blue A dress might not be a good fit for that. All right. So I'm just going to press this seam. We're just going to press it one direction. I don't really care what direction it is. It's going to go towards the under collar, though, because the top collar has all that interfacing. This fabric is very crisp. Um, however, it it's not like it's loving being ironed. You know what I mean? All right, so I'm going to line up my raw edges, and so I can actually see the top collar peeking out right here. Ooh, again, I just love seeing some of these color combos, like these two right here and this, these right here. Oof, oof, love it. Yeah, right, Aussie, Aussie Chic, I know. It's, um, I think it looks so much uh, better in person, too. Like, I, I like what it looks like on the website, but it looks, it doesn't have the, um, depth of all the colors on the website, you know? Oh, major twisting. Yeah, it's a cotton spandex mix, but yeah, you're right. It is got that crisp thing. Karma. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I definitely wasn't going to wish anything on anybody, but all right. So um, when you're putting your collar and collar stand, I'm not being very detailed about some of these things because I'm literally teaching this so in depth right now in the guild for a button up solo long. And so I feel like it's a little rep repetitious for some of those folks. Um, and you can always join in on that if you want. But um, when you're doing a collar and collar stand, it's really easy to get kind of confused with what's facing out, right? So this is what I, this is like a little easy way to do it. So this is your top collar, the one with the interfacing, right? So that's how it's going to face out to the world. You know, like this is your collar like this, right? Just like that. And then the collar stand faces out to the world with the interface one too. So just put these right on top of each other. Interface pieces facing up on both right? Face up, right? And then this one will go underneath all of it. So you lay your uninterfaced collar stand wrong, uh, right side up on the table. You put your collar. No, 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 no. Don't listen to me. I had it all right already. Put your, your interface collar stand right side up right here. Put your collar with the top collar right side up on top of that take your inner collar stand right side down wrong side up and you've got this little sandwich just like this and then line up all your centers along this top edge so and the way the reason i say this is a little confusing is that if you start thinking about it too much you kind of go well wait why aren't my my two interfaced pieces right sides together and that's because the the under collar is um, to the outer collar stand. So you just don't want to get too um, confused. All right. <laughs> a 
Oh no, Carrie, you have one that you can wear around your neck. That's awesome. All right, so I'm gonna start at this end. I don't like that this little seam is trying to sneak out here. Oh, if you want this top stitched, top stitch your collar now. I'm thinking it might kind of look nice without the top stitching. What do you guys think? Do we want our collar top stitched? I didn't even understitch it. We could understitch it too. Top stitch the collar or leave it clean like this. Top stitch or understitch? What do you guys vote for? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it is possible to have a, a nemesis in construction things for sure. <laughs> I have a few of my own. Do you guys not have an opinion? Because I think I'll, I'll do whatever I want. All right, so then I'm gonna take the collar and line it up to this little notch right here on the collar stand. Remember that one I told you was really, really important right here? And then we're gonna line up the collar edge right to that notch. I can't see it on this one because it's interfaced. No top stitch, I think, understitch. All right, should I understitch it? I wasn't even gonna understitch, but I'll understitch it. I'm not voting <laughs> Libby. Libby is feeling a little alone in her choices. <laughs> She's like, wham, I'm not even gonna tell you what I like because you're not even doing what I wanted you to do in the first place. <laughs> I don't like top stitching the ends of my collar. Even I don't like doing those. Those are a little awkward. Yeah, right, Aussie Chic? I think so too. It gives it kind of more of a, um, oh, this is why. Let's push that seam allowance this way. There we go. It does give it a more casual look. I think if the stitches are really close together, like your stitch length is really short, then you can get kind of a, a little more formal look. All right, so you just gotta get the, do the best you can to get into the corners. This is definitely one of those things when I was a newer sewist, I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna get into the corner. <laughs> oh, yesterday I had a vote in the chat of, do I do bias pieces or not? And everybody voted bias, except for 10% of the people. I'm pretty sure that was Libby. <laughs> she was 10% of the vote. <laughs> All right, so I pus pushed my seam to the under collar, the uninterfaced one. If you have a really, really curved collar edge, you should, you should clip that curve first before you um, do the under stitching. All right, so here we go. Let me put this on again. Line up that center back seam. Stack them all up. I hate it when my interfacing closes my notches, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's a good, yeah, I agree, I agree with that. It just looks so clean, I mean, look at that. It just looks really nice. I have to be careful, because sometimes I just do some of those things without even saying anything, I just do it. All right, so we're gonna sew this at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. This is where I, I, I'm gonna say, don't be very cavalier. You You actually want all these things to line up, so put that, Collar to that notch. Stack those straight up and down. And be precise with this stitching. And line up all these raw edges. Don't let this uh, under collar slip below. You can pre-stitch that, like put the raw edges of your collar together. The, the reason I don't is that if you end up not stitching those really accurately, your little pre-stitch will show on the collar. So I just do it now. You could even t um, pin it better. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Hi. Sure. Thanks, babe. Surprise me. I have a long stream today. Yeah, our lawnmower is really not cooperating, is it? Sorry to bother you. You're never bothering me. <laughs> husband alert. <laughs> it's a rare husband spotting. <laughs> okay, where is this notch on here? I just cannot see it on that uh, interfaced one. And I don't know why I took out my pins there because I did not do a gr the greatest job there. All right, I'm going to smooth out that little curve. You see a little bump there? Bumpity bump. Let's smooth that out right now. Let's see. What is sticking past that new seam? I think I got all of it. I think it's just this right here that works. Okay. Oh, thanks, Sydney. Oh, good. That's great, Michael. I'm so happy. First, we found a little um, it, that it, that the lawnmower turned into a little uh, mouse house. Hi, Aaron. Thanks for becoming a channel member. Nice, nice guy. <laughs> yeah, that's my nice guy. Yes. <laughs> All right, I'm just clipping this curve around the collar stand here. And look at this little bump here because I didn't pull my collar down. All right, so let's talk about that. You see how my little collar is poking up here? It's really not that, uh, not, not of a good thing because what happens if that, if you do that, and it's really easy for it to happen because all these curves are uh, going against each other. What will happen is this collar right here will be a different length than this one over here. So let's just check it before I ignore it. All right. Okay. They are still the same length. So I got really, really lucky. I don't know how that happened. It just disproved my point. <laughs> what a guy. All right, so clip this curve. This is your only chance, really. And the more clips you have, the more smooth of a curve you get. This definitely used to be one of my nemesis. <laughs> um, and... I would always get this like kind of choppy curve here. I feel like I've gotten really good at managing that curve now. Okay, I'm trying to get closer. This is right where the collar stand is, so I get a little nervous about it. All right, so what's this little thread here? Open up the seam allowance here and pull that thread out. It's this right here. Oh, there it is. Sometimes you shouldn't pull those threads when you know they're the fabric, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, and so to manage that little curve better, right now I will iron it. So I'm gonna kind of open up the collar stand. It's really awkward. And I just put the iron in there and really pull it apart right here. You really, and I really push my finger in there to smooth it out. And look at that. It's, it's a nicer curve that way. I don't think I was really ever being forceful enough with this little spot right here. And that's why it just never was a really nice curve. I would just think, oh, well, next time I'll do better. And now I just really, I really like pull it apart here and I push my finger in there and push against that seam. And then I look at it and then I smooth it out and see how, how that goes. All right, so now let's press this down. I'm gonna pull that under collar stand, which is on the bias and feeling very weird. Cause it's a stretch and on the bias. 
your wet, your, I do not know what that is. Okay, there's a lot of curve in this collar. Look at that. This will look like this. Like this. I think that this has enough curve in it that I'm gonna clip this curve too, right here. I don't usually have to clip this curve, but I'm going to today. It's enough that I can tell it's struggling a little bit to lay flat. Little friend and the little one, aw. Is this like a children's pattern company? Or who are they? Tell us more, he's opening, he's, he's busy opening his package and not listening to us. Lots of layers right here, so I'm being kind of cautious here. All right. That should lay a little better, I think. Anytime you have curves like that and you clip them, they're show stuff. Oh, Swedish Clothing Company. Oh, okay. <laughs> Your time is out again. <laughs> um, anytime you have curves like this and you clip it, um, I highly recommend. This is sound. This is going to sound very home economic teacher ish or teacher high school sewing teacher, but they're right on this one. Um, turn everything right side out and then put it in the position that it's eventually going to be in forever. Iron it so then that way these little clips have a chance to spread apart like this and do their thing before you top stitch or under stitch, right? All right, let's do it. Let's put this on. We have our neckline. Now we're gonna start from the inside and go to the outside. So I'm gonna walk this. I've never made this one before, so I'm gonna walk this and make sure everything's looking like it's going to fit really nicely. There's the shoulder notch, that's doable. And then where's the center back notch? That's doable as well. All right, so I'm just making sure. Not really, oh, cool. Snow stuff, nice. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put the collar stand right to the placket here. And I kind of bend it around so that the seam is straight up and down. I'm not gonna fuss too much with this at this moment. This might be okay, because this is a very crisp fabric. And then I'll um, do these all these landmarks. So I'll do the center back. I really clipped that really deeply. Oh, I need my label. The shoulder seam to the back neck. That oh, these notches are clipped way too much, too, way too deeply. Oh wow, that's a bummer. The, the great panini has really left a mark. That's what I was thinking too, Sydney. <laughs> Get these little threads to the placket. Line this up here. Nice. All right, what was I just thinking about doing? I was just thinking about doing something. What was it? I don't remember now. Oh, my label. <laughs> I knew it was important. Actually, maybe I will use, I have so few of my own left, but I do have this right here, this handmade goodness one. I'm gonna use that one.
I just ruined my knot. Oh, there we go. Cool. Now's the time for your label if you want it at the back neck because we're doing the inside first. It's so weird to do a collar in a collar stand with no yoke. The fact that it's just a single layer back there, it feels really thin. All right. Lighter weight thread always comes unthreaded on my machine. All right. All right, so when, um, like I think, I, like I said, I'm not going into a whole lot of detail about sewing shirts and collar stands. And I have a dedicated video for doing each of these elements on my YouTube page. But I really spend some time right here at the center front edge here where the collar stand meets the placket edge. And the way I look at this is this, this seam right here, this is the collar stand right here. See that? This seam right here. It needs to go to the middle right here of this placket. So if your placket's really thick, think of it that way because this thickness can really mess around with this matching and fitting correctly when you go to sew it. And it could be the difference with your collar stand sticking off the edge or being too short. And so if you have like a really thin fabric, uh, like a poplin or something that's very crisp like this one, you can just line up the ed ends and that's fine. If your placket's really thick, I suggest hanging your collar stand off just a smidge so that that seam is going to land in the middle of the thickness of your placket. All right. The turn of cloth, as people call it, or I like to call it the kerf <laughs> before I knew that that's what it was called. All right. And so I, this is a little too aggressively pinned. Now remember, you want the intersection of the seam allowance. So for me, I'm using quarter inch. So this quarter inch right here on this collar stand lines up to the quarter of an inch that's on the neckline there. You've never heard of Hannah Anderson. Legendary Swedish, um, right? Swedish company as well. Mostly known for knits and cozy stuff. Um, basics, great tights. <laughs> this is a really easy for me to sew because the collar stands on the bias and the um, curve of the neckline is there's a lot of bias in this. So this is not, not going to be a hard one to do. Let's make sure my shoulder seam is nice and flat and I don't get a little bump there. All right, and I'm having to do a little bit wider seam allowance here because of my really um, flamboyant notching here. You've never heard of Hannah Anderson either. What? Huh. They're very big in the Pacific Northwest. All natural fiber, clothing for kids, and, and some adult stuff. I haven't looked at them in years. Yeah, exactly, Anna. That sounds like them for sure. This is the shoulder seam right here. That, that would be very dangerous. Their stuff lasts. The only problem with their stuff is if you stain it, because <laughs> it lasts. It's like the, the nicest quality knits. And, and I would also, when I was buying it, it was very gender neutral as well. Yeah. They're a Portland-based company. Oh, that's, that's strange, because they were so marketed as Swedish <laughs> to me. Me and Sydney feel duped. <laughs> Malin's like, not Swedish. <laughs> Malin lives in Sweden, you guys. <laughs> All right, so right here at the, the um, juncture of the neck. So this is a really good example of why this gets really tricky. So 
this is what you're looking at. You're looking at my collars, the collar stands right here, right? There's the neckline, there's the placket. So when you get right here at the center front, you really need that quarter, that seam line, you need to stack these up on the seam line, but look at how it looks. It looks like my collar stand's pointing off the edge there, but it lines up right there at that point, so. Yeah, their sizes are European. Okay, Sydney, bye. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna clip this neckline. I'm telling you, this, this shirt is, I have sewn so many shirts lately, it feels so strange that it's just two layers of fabric here. It feels easier in some ways. I think it also has the potential to get stretched out much easier though. Swedish woman. Okay. Yeah, I don't think her name is, she, I don't think, yeah, oops, that's the wrong edge. I don't think uh, her name's Hannah Anderson. Mullen's like, I know every Swedish person It's like when you move to a new town and you sew and people are like, oh, do you know uh, Mary? She sews. <laughs> oh wait, I missed someone's com comment. Oh yeah, Brigitte, exactly. Cozy baby and children's wear. Those were the hand-me-downs you hoped for. <laughs> You're like, oh, I know that family buys that competition for the hand-me-downs. <laughs> right, Mullen? <laughs> I know. Okay, so now we're going to the inside and I'm going to turn this huge thing right side out. Okay. So now we're on the right side of the garment. So this, it's not actually, I turned it inside out, sorry. This is the right side of the garment in here. This is the outside of the garment, the insides. Oh my gosh, I'm having a little trouble lately. This is the inside, this is the outside, all right? And so the first thing I'm gonna do is do kind of these landmark areas, right? So the center back, let's match up this plaid here. Wouldn't it have been nice if I got the, the collar correct? You know what, I think I actually fell prey to that thing I've told you guys about. So uh, one thing I didn't mention when you're cutting out a collar, and I've been trying to like tell people this because, oh look, there's a little notch right there showing. Wait, is that a fabric flaw? Maybe that's a little fabric flaw. What is that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pull that in a little bit right there. There's a little notch going past my seam. But, um, when you're cutting out a collar, most of the time, in fact, I right now I feel like the track record that I've seen is 100% of the time, the collar when you're given the pattern piece is the text on it is usually upside down to how the collar is gonna be worn on the, the body. And I actually don't fault pattern companies for doing this because you're taught in school to mark the collar that way. Um, and uh, let me give you an example here. Yeah, actually, this one is is actually correct. So if you cut this one like this, that's the way the collar is going to lay on the body. But a lot of times when you see the collar, it's printed upside down. And then when you print it, your your print will be upside down when you're wearing it. So. They're not like that though, Shim. They're, I, I really don't think, they're, they're a little bit um, less interested in being that mainstream, mainstream. But they are kind of legendary, like they've been around for a long time. All right, I'm just re-sewing this little spot because I saw that little notch peeking out. And there we get ads of interest in so why I should do, right? <laughs> All right, let's 
see if we fixed that little spot right there. Definitely not my best sewing on this project, is it? Okay, that looks better. All right, so now we're back to pinning our neckline here. All right, so I do the center back neck here, right? And now I'm gonna go to a shoulder and print and, and uh, match that notch to the shoulder there. And I don't, this is the right side, the outside. So I don't want this to be, you know, uh, slack back here or anything. So make sure that you're doing a good job managing that. I do all my landmarks and then I'm gonna go and fuss with the center front. Do the center back right here. And we're just gonna fold it just past that seam we sewed, right up to it even, as long as it's not showing when we go to stitch it. I mean, the collar stand's matching the plaid, actually not too bad for a curved piece and the neckline is a curved piece, you know? I'm, I'm kind of, I'm experimenting right now. <laughs> I have an idea, I've been kind of pondering. All right, so now right here, I very, have very little seam allowance on this edge here. Why is that? It's like more on this interfacing piece here. All right, so that is very little. That is just too little, look at that. I may need to fix that. I don't wanna fix that. Hmm, how did I not notice that? See that? Look at this. this is my my collar stand right here. There's a discrepancy on those edges. I think I was fooled because I saw the interfacing and it lines up. <laughs> All right, so let's first check the placket length and make sure that we like where this is landing. This is the inside, by the way but it'll still give us a really good gauge. And if you're having concerns, you know, I would look at it from both sides as well. You know, so make sure, like turn your shirt right side out. Put your placket nice and flat here. And make sure that you're lining up this edge right here because if you don't, there's, you cannot fix this later. You really need to make sure now. So let's look at it. Oh my goodness, this shirt is really big. Here we go, this is the right side. Get my foot off the pedal. Yeah, Bridget, I didn't actually do a very good job of sewing that. I have a dedicated video for that, um, doing collar and collar stand, where I'm really focused on just showing you how I go about this. And I feel like I've even gotten better since that video, to be honest, just because I've sewn a lot of these lately like little subtle things I'm learning, you know. Um, all right, so first make sure that your placket, whether you're doing a button down or this kind of pop over thing, make sure this is nice and flat and that that seam lines up right there. You know, so just make sure. And mine does, I was kind of hoping, I mean, it's a little higher, so I actually could maybe sew this a little bit bigger seam allowance right here and that would give me a little bit more to turn back. So I'm gonna try that a little bit. Just a little tiny. Oh, why do you keep coming un unthreaded? My hands are shaky today, so I hate it when they're they're like that and you're trying to thread, you know? 
especially this really thin thread, is so much harder to um, thread the needle with. The thick stuff just kind of pokes itself through unless the eye is too small. And then, yeah, and then you have to sew a buttonhole on it, right? Yeah, I'm sorry I'm not being as detailed as I normally would be in some of these sew-alongs, but it's really just because we're trying to do the whole, we're doing so much today. Their directions are kind of meh. Sorry, merchant emails, but they kind of are. It just says like turn or like sew, the, sew that edge and it's like that, you just really glossed over that. <laughs> All right, so whatever you do, don't clip this corner. Okay, try and deal without clipping it. All right, and so what I usually do, this is the collar stand right here. This is the harder side that I'm gonna have to do. Um, I usually try and fold it around like that. Okay, we can trim this down right here. You can trim the seam allowance of this collar stand right here. I'm gonna trim that down a little bit. Now we can see a little better. And I'm opening up that collar stand. See, there's this curved seam right there. And then I'm placing that placket in there, wrapping it around. Actually, I'm wondering if I could do this. Hmm, did that work better? Or what if I did... Just experimenting for a second here. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I'll think about that. All right. All right, so let's fuss with this a little bit here. We don't want this thread peeking out at all, so we're gonna get rid of it right now. What is this right here? Is that a back stitch? It might be. It's not on the right side. Are we on the inside? Hmm. All right. Well, that was a short meeting. Oh yeah, Shim, that's because the take-up lever isn't at the top. Does your machine not automatically stop with the take-up lever, this right here, at the top? That's when I start using a spider. <laughs> what? <laughs> was that? Uh, they stop needle down mid sewing. They stop needle up when I'm done. Some machines have a setting for that, home machines. Highly recommend. In that video where I, I pit my three machines against each other, I think um, it's my old industrial, my new industrial, and my current home machine. And I sew the exact same thing on each of them. I time it and I also just kind of pit it against each other just to see what the difference is. Because I, I'm not, I'm never one to say an industrial machine is better than a home machine and that's kind of why I did that. I wanted to show like what the, the um, what you're missing out on and what you aren't missing out on. The one thing I noticed immediately is how much I rely on the needle stopping down and stopping up and the automatic thread clip and the heel lift. Most people think that the industrial is really great because you can sew heavy duty stuff. That's true if you sew heavy duty stuff, I don't. Um, and mine's not calibrated to sew heavy duty stuff. My old one was, but this one's not. And so, um, uh, the industrial is really great for efficiency. That's really the key thing about it is it's really efficient. It's very sturdy. It only does one thing though. It only sews straight. Um, and the, um, the pressure of the presser foot is so good. That's one thing I don't like about the domestic machine. Mine's just never firm enough. 
And if I, and my hands are really strong now after sewing for so long, I will yoink my work out from under my needle a lot. So, be trying to retain myself not to use that knife. Retrain yourself. Oh, really? Interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, Elena. Sewing spider is just a small piece of fabric used to sew on. Oh, that's what that's called? Yeah, that's smart. I think someone's out there. All right, so here's it. This side should be a little easier. I have a full seam allowance on both sides. This is the placket. This is the collar stand, right? And so I always open up the collar stand like this, and I highly recommend you do it this way. Open it up like this so you're looking at the end, and then fold this edge up just like this one is, right? And then now fold it back on itself like this. There's something about doing it that way that makes it a little bit more accurate. See, this one's gonna look a lot nicer than the other one. We have good ones and bad ones, right? Oh, because it cuts it short and unthreads. Oh, um, there's that's a setting for your thread length. I don't, I don't know how to adjust it, but um, I do know, I'm looking for the, do you have this on your industrial, this little box right there with the switch? If you have a lot of trouble with that, I'm pretty sure you want it so that the zero is depressed. And I think that that will help if you can't do this setting, can't get it adjusted. Pretty sure. Don't don't quote me too much. Uh, it's in that video. I can't remember. I don't use that. I don't like it. Um, it might that might be the thread sweep. And so what happens? There's also this little wire down here. Oof. Okay, you can see the tip of this little wire right here. You see this? Oh no, that's not it. That's my thread. It's down here. It's a little wire and it does this little motion to th sweep the thread. I turn that off too. That thing scares the living daylights out of me when it's on. All right, so we're gonna start to center back neck and I'm gonna turn this so that it's inside out. Cause I don't have a free arm on my machine. See another advantage to home machines. I don't have a free arm. So I have to sew from with the shirt up above like this and then I can be inside here. And so we're gonna um, sew from starting from the center back. Where's my, um, oh, never mind. I was like, where's my, my label? It's on the inside. This is the outside of the garment. <laughs> I love that I just forgot that. Yeah, check out your manual. That's a, a very adjustable thing. Because I wish mine was shorter, but then I would have that issue and that would be not very good. All right. So you got your fold just past the seam. You're not really worried about what it looks like on the other side. We've already sewn it. It's nice and secure. So if this is your, your early in your um, shirt making, skill building kind of, um, you know, era, and you're just trying to get a really nice looking shirt, this is a really good way to do that. And you're not worried about the inside. Whereas the other way you would do this, you would sew the outside first and, le and then sew the inside after. And that's really hard to do. I never do that. You never use your free arm? Yeah, not all home machines have a free arm, exactly. All right, so we're coming to that center front. I go into a whole long spiel about doing the collar and collar stand. It's not long, it's just uh, very informative in that button up so along. And I talk about like leaving a little bit of a, it's not leaving a gap, it's actually over rotating this collar stand. So like down here, what I'd usually do on the other side, not this one, but just that one over there, I will pin this so that this is pulled toward the shirt. It's like over rotated towards the shirt so that when your machine's coming along and it's pushing on this fabric, it will even it out, it'll correct. 
I don't have to do it on this fabric because it's pretty um, stable. Okay, this is the long, nice, easy edge because we're just at the top of the collar stand and it's already sewn. All right, so now here we are approaching the front again. I'm going to swing the shirt around so you can see better. Well, maybe you won't see better, but you won't see so much white. Hi, Eliza. Yeah, me too. All right, there we go. When you you ever have these little sections where maybe, like this one's okay, but say this was a lot of extra fabric right there, right? I use my awl and I, I take it and I just push it towards the needle. I don't want to get a tuck, but I can kind of manage that little bit by using the awl and pushing against the needle because, and I explain this all the time, but you got to remember your feed dogs are pulling the under layer away from you while the pressure of your feet is pushing the fabric as you're approaching it and so it can make it slide towards you so oh yeah oh yeah Sydney I mean I do French and flat fill with pattern matching just match on the seam line like I say in that pattern matching skill building session seam line you don't want to match the raw edge you want to match the seam line But that really, like matching the seam line really is in reference to when you're sewing it. When you're cutting it, it, it's actually pretty, most of the time, it's pretty okay to look at it flat and the raw edges are what you're looking at. But just remember, it's the seam line that matters. All right, here we are at the beginning. The reason I start at the center back too, I don't ever start and stop right here. This is, I feel like, one of the biggest fatal mistakes that patterns tell you to do is to start right here and go around or go from end to end. And don't backstitch here. If you, you most likely, the first 10 shirts you sew, you're most likely going to have to rip that out. And it's just such a bad place to do seam ripping. It'll get tired. It won't behave. So... All right, let's look at it on the inside. I see a thread right here I want to cut. So this is the right side. Um, so this is how the collar will look, just like this. Like that. I love this color right here. Um, and then let's see how it did on the inside. Oh, wow. That's my best one in a while. Look at that. I'm not on it right here. It's the inside. Another thread right here. Cool. Our collar and collar stand are done. Now I think we're going to do the side seam and the um, cuff and the hem. All right. So we're going to put this wrong sides together first. We already did our little sleeve pack placket. We don't have to worry about that. We don't even have any pleats. So let's see if my plaid matching did a little better on the side seams. It won't there, but it might when it, we get to this. No, not at all, actually. Oh, no. That's right. It's a drop tail hem. <laughs> yeah, so I think it will match. Okay. All right, so this side seam, I'm doing a French seam, and it has a vent on the side. So we're going to stop. There's probably a notch of where you stop. I'm going to stop just above this vent. See this little cutout right here? You do end up with the top stitch line if you're flat felling. Yeah, on the outside, yeah. You can't really avoid that. trim this edge a little bit. I got a little chunky there when I was cutting it out. Chunky. Yep, 
Yeah, if you don't want the top stitch line, then you, you want a French seam. <laughs> if you want a hand sewing option, ask for ask Shem. <laughs> All right, same thing here. It's a lot of shirt. I keep saying that, but it really is. Don't pull any of this. Just let it lay there. Oof, I would really like it to match a little better there, so maybe pull a little bit. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna try and ease that in a little bit right here, just to get the plaid to match. Rip. Thread there. All right. Okay, so let's get our goal here. Like that. See if we can get on track by then. All right, that's better. I'm just stopping at the top of the vent there. That's always kind of a weird thing to French seam a vent. Um, there will invariably be a little bit of a raw spot you'll see in a second. You'll still get a really nice clean finish and um, they're not very common to do but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, I think I can handle that. Alright, so uh, we're gonna clip right here up to the where we just sewed so see that I clip right there and same on the other side clip up to that and now we're going to go and iron <laughs> yeah I, I kind of think it's funny that shim landed here when I don't hand sew at all. <laughs> all right, this will be a tricky seam to press, but we're just gonna press that seam any direction. We can do it from this side too. So let's just pull this away and just try and iron that seam any direction. I'm probably gonna clip that curve too because this is a really high stress area. I guarantee it will probably pop someday. It's not ideal. These, these, these sleeves are just never ideal. They have their drawbacks. But see, look at how it sticks up right here. I don't know if you can see that. And it's because this little raw edge is shorter than where the seam is. So it's kind of like, uh, you don't want me to lay flat, right? <laughs> you know? So we'll clip that when we go to sew it. And uh, we'll press this one. We're just gonna do our best pressing this. If you don't French seam this, it'll it's less likely to, to pop right there. And, and I'm not talking like it'll pop next week. It it just it may take a year or two. You never know. Oh, I know, Shin. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right, this edge will be a little easier to iron because we can turn it now inside out. Get it right on that edge. I really hope I like this shirt because I really want to make one out of linen. I I just recently got a lot of good linen. I need some solid shirts. All 
All right. Isn't it interesting to think about a time when, and I just can't believe this will happen, but a time when, you know, 150 years from now, people will, there will be a Bernadette banner wearing the, the clothes of today. <laughs> Wait, where to buy linen from? Maker's Fabric. I do, Shem. I have that, and I, I want to make some white shirts using that. All right, I'm going to clip into this curve a little bit. This will help that area right here. Is the plaid a teal and coral or green and red? Oh, this one right here. Green and red, watermelon. Think about watermelon, Eliza, because that's what it's modeled after. I think watermelon is a really good way to do that. Do you, Anna? Yeah. It's kind of like, um, oh, that's too hard to explain. <laughs> it's pretty striking uh, the more I work with it it is one of those really great fabrics that has these great color combos like this one right here and this one right here I'm really into <laughs> and that one where it gets kind of like here like it's muted I love this little muted section here all right probably easier to do that before you iron it, I know. Um, why does this look wrong? Wait, did I do that one wrong? Wait a minute. This is the right side. I think I did one of these wrong. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. I just, like, had a panic attack. <laughs> what am I seeing that looks wrong here? Is it this one? What am I just seeing? Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know, Libby. I like things that are really versatile. And this is one of those things where you just couldn't wear it very many times throughout the year. So, are you serious, Anna? There's only five and a half yards. You can see how much they have on the website, just so you know. If you're interested, don't wait. They may even have other colorways of this Madras plaid. It's a it's stretch, so. Try not to pull this. Now, um, right now I am running the risk of not matching my plaid. So we're gonna try and do our best through here, right here. But I could have spent a little more time trying to do that. All right, so now down here at this clip, remember we had to clip that? Just pull that out right there. And then sew up to that point. Like this, so see that little clip? Sticking out. We'll clean that up in a second. Yeah, the sunflower jeans. Uh, no. I don't know how much it takes, Eliza, sorry. I said there's five and a half yards left on the website. Oh, the uh, for the plaid? Oh, that's interesting, Elena. So it's the style for you. I love I love layering things like that. I think that's that's a good point. I feel like that about uh, when I used to sew a lot of the sewing workshops patterns like 20 years ago. They were so so unique. 
that, um, and there was nothing wrong with wearing them all the time. It just felt very distinctive and it, like they really stood out and I didn't really want to stand out all the time. <clears throat> all right. Now we can do our hems and our cuffs. Let's check it out. We could put it on my dress form too right now. I wore black jeans today so I could throw it on at the end. All right, so I think clipping that curve is a good idea because, you know, you're going to get some little drag lines right here if you don't. All right, so I'm going to do the cuffs now. This is a fold over style cuff. Um, I, mine's on the bias. Wish me luck. Oh, yeah, totally, Elena. Yeah, that would be good. What I like about hearts, too, is that they get a lot of fabrics they can reorder, so maybe this is one of them. All right, so we're going to put this inside cuff, the uninterfaced side, to the wrong side of the, the sleeve here. And let me trim this. Right here is these little threads. I'm going to walk it and make sure that everything looks copacetic, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's a good, and it's stretchy. That's why I think the Deer and Doe, like, like Elena, I was thinking the Deer and Doe Mella Low shirt would look really great in this. Okay, that's right. There's five eighths inch seams. So that makes sense. <laughs> okay. It longer is better than shorter. All right, so we're going to put this, I keep seeing two seams here. So this right here is the, let's get this straight here. This is the underarm. I'm going to just, I'm just going to stitch my seams. I'm going to press them the way I want right now. So I don't have to, to deal with remembering when I'm in there. So I press my shoulder seam towards the back and my side seam, my underarm seam to the back as well. And we're going to take your cuff right side to the inside here. I was just thinking about something. Oh my gosh. There we go. All right, so hang off the cuff, the seam allowance amount. And we're gonna stitch it on. Try not to stretch my cuff since it's on the bias. Doesn't seem like I'm in any danger of it being too small, which is nice. Too big is fine. Too small, not so fine. Oh, really, Elena? What wasn't right for you about it? You know me, I don't really like a non set in sleeve shirt, but I, I like that one for the most part. I don't like the hem of it. I've definitely drastically altered the circumference of the hip and the hem because I don't like the sides being really high and my skin showing above my pants, you know? My throat was actually getting sore from talking. <laughs> All right, just sewing it around here. Put that thread to the raw edge here. Did you do a long sleeve version? Because I feel like that wouldn't be the best for Melolo. I could be wrong. I don't know. All right, so now we're going to check our placket right here and make sure that that seam is right across. See that right there? Don't skip that. Yeah, the, the bicep of the sleeve for that is very small. If you have a big bicep, you should um, grade out on that bicep circumference. I totally agree with you on that. All right, so we're going to fold this up. I do not pre-fold this edge. Don't pre-fold it. Just ignore every instruction you've ever seen about cuffs. Do not pre-fold this edge. All right, and so we're going to... Fold this on the fold line, and we're going to sew the ends here. 
nice and straight. Then you go right next to that little placket there, right? Just like that. Leave this unfolded. Oh, you did do the long sleeves. Yeah. I just don't think a, a, a sleeve pattern like that without being set in it works for long. Yeah, I could totally see how it didn't work out then. All right, and now I'm gonna make sure my cuff here is the same on either side. So we want these to match, right? There we go, that looks better, okay. Yeah, that archer you were wearing yesterday was really cute. Okay. I'm gonna sew this whole, this whole one whole, all the way through. All right, so now we're gonna turn our cuff. I literally just recorded this last night and this morning for the button-up sew along. <laughs> In fact, look, my finished archer's back there. Can't wait to try it on. All right, so now we're on the right side of the garment. So I'm gonna turn my sleeve inside out so it'll be easier to sew. <clears throat> okay. And now right here, this is a little different than the collar stand. This is a little easier to manage and I have a, a little trick for you that I have found works really good. Just don't follow the instructions on most cut, because I've never seen this part this way. <laughs> yeah, right, Elena, exactly. I know, me too. I finally just altered my archer to fit me perfectly. And that's my tried and true. It's okay, Like I don't need to buy another pattern for that every time, you know? If I wish I would think that way about jeans, because I literally only make the same pair of jeans that I, for me, but I keep wanting to try all the jeans that come out. Okay, so right here, this little short end of your cuff, all right? Same thing like I did with the, um, hey, just did you, with the collar stand. Open it up like this, all right? So this is why I tell you don't pre-fold this. It, it causes problems, all right? So when you do this, the seam allowance of this edge on this side is gonna naturally push towards the cuff. Let's, I'm gonna turn, show you inside here, see? So that's the short end of the seam. Look, see, there's that folded up edge where we attached the cuff. Now fold this, wrap it around here like that, all right? And then continue on. Let me show you why, just so you don't think that's not different. Most of the time, what they have you do is pre-fold this edge right here, right? Now, if this edge was folded independently of this piece right here, that's what would happen if you pre-folded it. And then you turn it like this. What happens is that you have the risk of this little piece hanging out, and you also have the risk of this right here not being long enough to cover your seam. So that's why you should just leave all your options open by not pre-folding it and then just wrap it around there and fold it and look at how nice that looks right there. Come in. Hey, my lunch is here. Okay, I want you all to see what he's wearing right now. Come here. And then tell me that I was right. Fairfield in the plaid. <laughs> I tell him he wears that every day. <laughs> Thank you. Would you bring me a burrito? <gasps> Thank you. Oh, yay. <laughs> cool. I call that where I got it, but there's a new Texas barbecue truck right Oh, block. nice. Yeah, exactly. Yay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thanks. I'm looking forward to it. I'm almost done, kind of. Okay, enjoy. Everyone's saying hi. <laughs> There's a delay, so it takes a bit. Yeah. Nice looking shirt. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Thanks, babe. Okay, sure. See ya. <laughs>
Yum, exactly. I have a thing for um, sandwiches that are like Thanksgiving sandwiches. <laughs> you know, where there's stuffing and cranberry sauce and gravy inside. Turkey lurkey. <laughs> I love it. Treat form, exactly. I'm finishing the one I'm making for him today in the button up sew along. And I think that I might give it to him by this weekend. So, all right, here's the other side. Same thing, I'm just gonna wrap it around. Pants, shirts, <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Elena. Yeah, I totally agree, Elena. Hey, Anna. Oh, you're saying hi to him. I'm like, aren't you, weren't you already here? <laughs> Okay, so um, we're going to fold up this cuff. And because I like, I personally like cuffs that have a seam right here. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I like a seam here because then you can't make the mistake of this width right here not being the same on both sides. Well, you can, but it's a little easier to control it, right? So... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this and you can iron this too, but this is actually because of the interfacing and this crispness, I'm feeling this is, this feels really good. I, I, there's no need to iron this right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin along this edge right here, kind of close to the fold, but like an inch away. My archer cuff is too narrow to do an inch away. It's more like three quarters of an inch. And the what, reason I do this is now when I pull on this edge right here to turn it under and top stitch it down, I can't pull this too far like this and, and pull that fold towards the in the outside and make it a different width, right? So I, that's how I like to control that. And now we're just gonna fold this. And I, I pin away for myself like this, like I have the cup away. It's easier for me. I can't quite see, but I'll just fix it in a second. I'm just gonna give myself a few landmarks here. All right. Sorry, it's hard to see, I know. Try and fold it back like that. The bias looks pretty cute, doesn't it? I will we'll fold this one back here. Just like this. And then I'll put a, one more pin and then now I'm gonna just kind of make sure everything's looking good by going like this. And so right here, I know I have to like touch this up usually after I first do it. That's okay. Remember, I'm working on the right side of the garment. We don't really care what the inside looks like. We care, but you know what I mean. And this is another one where when you're down here, you might want to over rotate it so I'll take this sometimes especially on thick stuff or or squishy loosely woven stuff like some yarn dyed um, plaids and stuff sorry I'm having a little like explosion there <laughs> I will take this edge right here only at this end the end I'm going to sew toward and I pull it toward the inside of the cuff a little bit more like this like I over rotate it that way while I'm sewing along it'll push it and even out this one I can feel, it wants to do a little bit of a bump right here. And it's just because it's a lot of fabric and thicknesses there, so I'm trying to manage that right now. And because it's on the bias, I think the bias is really trying to make it wrinkle right there. Yeah, I don't really like the raw denim very much. I don't like the jean styles for them either very much. It's so narrow too. I have to have a curved side seam. Like, <laughs> no way I can't. Okay, so here's the underarm seam. I start there, hold my tail out of the way. Yeah, I kinda wanna fold this a little bit more. I was gonna experiment on this shirt in the stream today, and it, but it's the wrong cuff style to experiment with. I 
boy, I don't know if you guys remember what stretch denim was like when it first came out, but trust me when I tell you, you are living in the a, a better age for stretch denim. Like before, it was like, yay, stretch denim. And then we were all like, great, what's going to hold our pants up by 2 p.m., you know? Now denim has come a long way. I was, I was really into Liverpool jeans before I started uh, making my own, like recently. You can have a curved raw seam with, you can have a curved seam with raw denim. The problem is raw denim is so narrow that you're, you're usually maximizing the usage of the fabric by altering the pattern pieces to have a straight side seam. And then you use the selvage as part of your side seam that that seam is finished for you. It, and so if you have the fabric and you can, you can curve it. Yeah, Elena, I do. <laughs> all right, so I'm just sewing all the way around. I'm going to take these pins out. I saw skinny jeans. I was like, nope. It had no recovery. Ugh, yeah. Yeah, usually, usually, like, raw or selvage denim... Maybe we're talking about different things. Is narrow. The yardage is narrower than usual. And that's why you see sometimes those um, cuffs that are rolled up are... Um, so you can see the selvage on the side, on, on the cuff. I, I'm not really an expert in all that. I, I'll, I'll definitely admit that. Like it's not, it's not a thing I'm into. So I haven't really, I'm aware of it. You know. All right, here's our little cuff here. And so this is the inside. Not bad. My actually, I actually fell on the cuff pretty much the whole time. Doesn't really matter. It's on the outside, but that I like the bias cuff. Yeah, it's really narrow. We're not talking 36 inches. We're talking 32 inches exactly. It's like... It's a good thing things like the Mitchell trousers <laughs> aren't made in that because you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> um, this is the right side. Yeah, okay. I'm just making sure because of the seam allowances. That goes like that, and this goes like this. Sorry, right. I'm just pre-stitching those seam allowances. All right, and again, we're gonna put the cuff inside here on the wrong side, hang off the seam allowance. Inside cuff first. It might not be Malin. I could be combining the two. I combine the two in my head. Terry probably knows. I think the good one of the good arguments for raw denim is how long it'll last. Because that's like, you know, when we all had Levi's and you could sell them when they were broken in after like 20 years for a lot of money, but it's not, it's not worth it. Okay, let's look at this seam allowance here and make sure I do the same over here. Yeah, that's, I think that's exactly what Elena said. I think that's exactly it. So, yeah. All right. So, fold this down. Let 
line up these edges. Try and get a nice parallel seam here. I always straighten out this little placket right here like this, like that. Oh, I didn't get quite close enough though, so I'm gonna straighten that out a little bit. There we go. Remember, don't don't fold that up. Oh well, there you go, Shim. All right, that's a big like uh, mount sticking off the end there. It's most likely because my placket or the cuffs on the bias so it got a little bigger and maybe my seam allowances on those two French seams were, you know, a sixteenth of an off inch off on one and a sixteenth of an off on the other and then there you go, there's my eighth. I'm going to trim it down a little bit, but don't trim that down there. Yeah. All right, so then let's look at our cuff width from side to side, from left to right, or, you know, front to back, really. It's front to back, not left to right. <laughs> and we'll see if our cuff's matching there. So that seam right there is... Eh. I think it'll be okay. Okay, and so now I'm going to turn the shirt. Inside out. And again, you're going to wrap that seam allowance around the other one. Place it like that. The side's always a little bit like soft and wishy, and that's okay. We'll, we'll like make it more in line with the edge there once we get pinning it. And um, we're just gonna pin a few other places first. Like this. So see how this is a little bit shy? So what I can do is kind of make this fold relax a little bit, pull it out a little bit with my awl, like that, cover it up better. The bias is kind of fiddly. All right, so now, Get your cuff, I sometimes go like this, fold it and then kind of go like this, make sure it's folded evenly all the way around. And this looks a little uneven right here, which wouldn't be surprising because of the bias, right? The bias is gonna make it kind of do funny things. So I'm just gonna pin it right here in the middle. Like that. Fold it under here. I would like a shirt out of this, this right here. I want these two colors, a whole plaid shirt. That is what I want. And then I want another one in these two. <laughs> I'm not trying to confuse you. Most people though, they are talking about, like when you talk, see a lot of jeans patterns referencing denim, they're usually referencing Selvage denim because you make the pattern in relation in relation to it and all selvage den denim is raw denim so that's why it gets a little confusing with raw denim in general you don't have to make a pattern because of the denim but with selvage denim you do it's just too narrow for pattern pieces. I couldn't even get one Mitchell across my muslin. <laughs> I had to open up my muslin because I have really narrow muslin. It's like 36 inches wide. <laughs> I 
So meaning I couldn't cut two. I couldn't cut two on my uh, muslin. I can only cut one. I don't like that I was a little crooked with this back stitch and that's what's creeping out there. Do you ever have that happen where you go to back stitch and it veers off one direction or another? And it's it's like the reverse of a car, right? The the um, reverse is always in a higher speed, a higher gear. So you're like, ah, it's going crooked. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like what Elena said. I feel like I've said what Elena said like six times this week. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to run out of bobbin thread. That wouldn't be appreciated right now. And again, make sure you don't start your stitching at this end here. Start it in the middle of your cuff. Just trust me on that. If you have to take this apart right here, it's really hard to um, keep that fabric the integrity of the fabric right there. All right, so we just have this little section here. You know, I think I saw someone on Instagram talking about this in a, a really good way to understand it. I'm pretty sure it was Wizard Dreams. She was talking about raw denim and salvage denim and like pattern placement and the shape of the side seams and stuff. All right, that looks pretty good. Should we check it out? It looks a little tent-like, I'm not gonna lie. Nice, that's great, Jim. That must feel good. Okay, so we have our collar and collar stand. I keep thinking those are threads, those little like, handmade. <laughs> I keep thinking those are threads. Ooh. Here's the cuff. That seam right there just kind of gave me a fright because I thought that was yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, it goes like that. All right, so let's do our hem facing. Yeah, exactly. I saw that you were working on that. That's the one you had to like add that piece. That probably feels really good. All right, so let's see. This is... This is the center back one. We'll do that one first. It's got the drop tail hem. So we're gonna do the whole hem now, including the vent. Does this go all the way to the edge? I think it might. I did not spend time matching this plaid, so forgive me. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do, yeah, okay, we're just gonna sew this, sorry. Oh, cool, Malin. Okay, you can iron, pre-iron this edge here. Mine doesn't like iron, being ironed very much, so I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit there for my hem amount, and now we're gonna sew this at the seam line there. I was just like kind of looking it up, making sure. All right, and so I'm lined up to the vent edge right here. We're gonna go down around up to the bottom and we're gonna do the same up the other vent, okay? It would have been really nice if I'd spent the time to match the plaid on this. It is a hem facing, so it still would have been nice, you know. Exactly, Terry. Yeah.
Denim is the one thing, is one of the only things in American fashion that we can lay claim to. So you wanna turn the corner at the seam line. I have to back up a little bit and do one stitch. And go up the short edge. Remember to fold it down, same amount. Same with sportswear and um, knits and t-shirts. So we have had a pretty big impact on clothing in the world, contrary to probably what it seems like. <clears throat> it's obviously centered in workwear and comfort, casual wear, fitness type stuff. I'm reinforcing my little corners here. I don't know why, doesn't really need it. There's denim museums too. There's, I know there's one in Washington. My friends got to go to it when we were working in the garment industry. And um, <clears throat> one of the, the sad things is that we sold a lot of our looms to overseas companies. Jeans, I mean jeans, sorry. Articles of interest, is that a podcast, Elaine? No, I haven't. Yeah, right. I, I agree, Delwyn. I really wish I would have matched this one, the plaid. Feeling like I cheaped out on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, um, Aisha. But a lot of our, our looms here for weaving denim, we lost them. Yeah, exactly. It's French, yeah. Yeah, because they had workwear there too. All right, turn down this edge. I would like a another podcast. I'm a really big Radio Lab fan. This is probably going to be a little uh, unfounded that what I'm about to say. Like I know that I didn't finish listening to the episode, but I saw that, um, and I'm a big. I used to be a really big Radio Lab fan, and they had a, a recent. Um, episode about about butts <laughs> and I saw warp and weft textiles shared I was like oh cool I'm gonna check it out I couldn't get past the first like 20 minutes there were so many inaccuracies about the garment industry that I was just like like I'm fine with that being like okay this isn't really what it's about but we're trying to set up the whole thing and I was just trying to be like, yeah, whatever. And then I was just like, I just don't know. I don't know about the research on this now because there's just so like so much really obvious inaccuracy. So I stopped listening to it. And I was so sad because it was also the first episode I've listened to without Jad Abumrad. And I was like, oh, that's right. He's not on the show anymore, which I was kind of shocking. So <laughs> I don't know. I'll Maybe I'll try and give it another try. But um, I'm all caught up on maintenance phase, which is hands down the, the biggest score this year. I really re loved that um, series or that podcast. Yeah, Cone Mills. Yeah, exactly. Radio Lab makes you nervous. Holsey says, does, 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 oh, real American Ivy style. Like, are you talking about like um, like polo Ralph Lauren type of thing? Yeah, so Americans invented sportswear. Like that's one of our things, our claims. I, that's what I was taught. Yeah, thank you, Claire. Yeah, sorry about that. I meant to say jeans. Okay, articles of interest, okay. I think Radiolab is not what it used to be. Huh. Yeah, I read that. I mean, I, uh, I listened to the first episode, If Books Could Kill. I tried listening to the other one he used to be on, and that one... <sighs> Look. Let's just have a little chat <laughs> about podcasts for a second. I have to put up with comments on my YouTube channel saying, I talk too much. My tutorial isn't fast enough. Please speed it up. 
Um, why isn't this two minutes long? When I listen to your podcast, if you're going to put five minutes of fluff in the beginning, I want to leave an angry comment. I only get 40 minutes of your podcast. That's it. That's your podcast is like 40 minutes, 50 minutes long. It's not very long. I really want it to be all about everything you're going to do because I, it's going to be really good. And at the end, I'm going to be like, oh, it's over already. Why did you cut? Don't cut out all the other stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're wrong about exactly. It was good, but it, it, it just was very chatty in some times. You are good? Okay, I'll check that out. Oh, is that, um, you mean his co-host on You're Wrong About or on um, Maintenance Phase or on If Books Could Kill? He's done a lot of podcasts. So I've been trying to do the, the dressed one, and I, there's so many commercials I can't do it. Like it's, it's like mainstream commercials, you know? Why is this one not clipped right here? So let's clip this right here. This doesn't feel very uh, wide right here. Oh yeah, we need to clip that all the way over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm gonna have to, yeah, I need to, that's what it is, okay. All right, so first of all, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this seam on the side seam and we're gonna go a little past this vent. You didn't have to do it on the first pass, but on the second pass, we need to go a little bit lower, all right? Yeah, I really like Aubrey Gordon too. She has a new book coming out. Get rid of these threads, blend my seam a little better. My bobbins aren't the same. Sarah Marshall, oh, okay. Yeah, see, I was having a little trouble with the episode I listened to. I was like, okay, please start talking about the topic. And so today I was like, all right, I'm just going to use the explore feature in podcasts and try and find another one. And um, this one, it just said it was about Charlize Theron. I was like, okay, I like her. I'll just put it on. I just couldn't find anything. All this list, I was like, I don't want any of these newsy ones. <laughs> and um, it was so much these guys talking back and forth. I didn't know who they were. I didn't know like what the, what, I didn't know what this podcast was going to be about. And so I was just like, all right, is this all they do? Is it a chat? Are they going to talk about her? Are they going to interview her? And then they had her on. Finally, she comes on. I had to speed it up to two times speed. Skip, 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 30 second, 30 second, 30 second to get to, because they were just talking about an outfit, getting on a plane. And I was just like, I don't know what this is about. And then she finally comes on. And then they spend the first few minutes about how cute her haircut was, how her sweater looked on her. I had that sweater. That sweater was really cute. You're working, you're really, oh, do you wear socks? Oh yeah, look at your tattoos. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm done. <laughs> Can you imagine going on a podcast and they spend the first five minutes talking about how you look today? <laughs> oh my goodness. It was a little annoying. Um, I hate cutting this part. I really hate cutting this part. So this is why we did this seam a little bit past. So I'm going to clip into this right here. I'm going to go at an angle. I'm wondering if that'll be, it'll be, we'll do an experiment. And so now we can open up this vent here and we'll be able to hem it. All right. Oh yeah, that was actually pretty good. I, I've listened to all those. <laughs> All right, same thing on this side. Let's uh, do I extend this seam. 90 pint, okay. Thank you, Danny, 99% invisible. And then, um, oh, there's a town in North Carolina, Blowing Rock, where the Cone family, oh, oh, cool. I didn't see that little tidbit. You are good is about movies, oh. Articles of interest, 99% invisible. Okay, I got to try and remember these because my phone's way over there. All right, so now we're going to turn this hem facing right side out. We're going to go iron it because my fabric is like, eh, I don't know if I want to lay flat today. I'll give your wrong about another try. 
But she was just chatting and chatting and, and um, I was like, okay, what is this about? Getting curious? Mm -mm. Just turned in my corners on my um, facing here. Right, okay, let's go to the iron. <laughs> it does, I know, but I don't, I don't wanna listen to me and go back. <laughs> it's true, Elena. All right, so I'm just gonna press this seam really good right here. Oh, my iron is hot, hot, hot. Okay, now we're gonna slide this up like this. Get my pins. We'll spend some time pinning right now. You can just fast forward if you're at the Iron with me here. <laughs> oh, oh, cool, Terry. Yeah, remember, I used to kind of struggle with these because I was like, oof, don't think I've ever done this before. I know how to do a French seam. I know how to do a vent 10 different ways. I've never done two together, the both together. <laughs> And it was on that Rita shirt dress. I've I've since looked and then um, been like, oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I did. But I got the, I had to like get there in the end, you know, like I had kind of had to like go back and forth. I don't mind chatty if it's about the topic. You know what I mean? Like it's when it's they're going to do this whole like unrelated intro like, oh, yeah, your daughter, she's really awesome. I, oh, I hang out with your wife yesterday and blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, it was her, it was my daughter's sweet 16. And I'm just like, okay, I don't know you people. It's my first episode. <laughs> I, they didn't even introduce themselves. <laughs> there was three guys talking. I had no clue who they were. <laughs> You find my chat's company. Yeah, here I am talking about people being too chatty, and here I am. Um, <laughs> thanks, Tamara. <laughs> Is it Tamara or Tamara? There's a lot of ways to say that, I know. Okay, so we're going to turn under this little vent edge here. Like, roll him it right here. Yeah, I think she might have too, Shim. I was just remembering that. Okay. It's funny. I'm not much of a gear nerd. Like as far as like the equipment I need to do what I do here for streaming. Right. And, um, I'm not much of a gear nerd. Like a lot of people end up getting into streaming and doing YouTube kind of because they really love the gear aspect of it. They, they like all the video equipment and stuff like that. I don't, I, I don't really, that doesn't come very natural to me. Um, but I will say the one thing I really like is good audio quality. And mine is, it's okay. I know that, but it's the one thing that gets really, really expensive. So I'm using a wireless microphone by Rode, made in Australia, by the way. And, um, and that was about, that was a big splurge for me. It was like $230. Um, but I just saw that there's another one coming out <laughs> and I was like, uh oh, I'm kind of getting gear nerdy. What is this right here? Is that a thread? It's not a notch, is it? No, it is not a notch. Okay. It's just a thread. Okay. I'm just making sure. But I think about that. I think like if people are just listening, even if they don't really like what I'm saying, it'll be so much more easy to take if the audio quality is good. Yeah, exactly, Shem, I know. 
Same with um, streamers. I don't think a lot of people realize how important that is. It, they, it, people might not even consciously know they don't like something because of the audio quality. Yeah, I, I mean, I know it is, Amy. Um, but there, I listen to a lot of audio content and streams, and I know what kind of sound I would love to have. Like, I know what kind of sound. <laughs> I don't even know what kind of mic would do it. It's not funny. It's the thing I will, I will scrap a whole video for the audio and I have, I just did recently, re-record it. Okay. This little edge right here, you see how this little turn back is? I don't know if you can see, I'll show you at the machine, but that might be a little bit of a problem. And um, I think that's partly, I kind of regret that I pre-folded this. If you're not at this stage and you sew this little end here, this one right here, what I would do is I wouldn't pre-fold this, but don't sew it all the way through the raw edge. Just stop, you know, like stop right here and leave this loose right there. You can get a nicer turn back finish without doing it um, pre-folded. Yeah, oh gosh, Shem, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, I was having this trouble the other day and honestly, the thing that messes with my settings is every time there's an update on the computer, you guys have seen me struggle with it like the other day, it um, changed the native volume for my mic. <laughs> I'm like, wait, why are you changing it? Like the computer has nothing to do with that. It's, I wanna change this in the mic settings. <laughs> okay, so here is this vent right here, right? And so remember I sewed the seam past where the French seam ended and then I clipped up there at where the French seam ended. So now it can kind of relax and open up like this. And then we're gonna, um, it's kind of a little easier to turn it sideways. And then roll hem this in here. The reason I'm doing this last, I know that this step was earlier on is because we're gonna be able to sew this all in one continuous long seam and it's gonna look super sharp doing that. These are the kinds of things that you can kind of impart your look on with a pattern. It doesn't mean that because they didn't do it this way that that was wrong or anything. That just may have been just way too much to explain, <laughs> you know? and sounded, it would have sounded really fussy. I'm trying to get this turned under under here. It would have sounded really fussy written out in directions and people would have been like, oh my gosh, that's a little extra. And then they, they would have done it um, the other way anyway, right? So this way, look at that, my plaids match. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> they match somewhere. <laughs> All right, let me get this under here. It's okay if you do it the way they do it. It's gonna look really great if you do it the way they have it in their instructions too. I'm gonna fuss with this at the machine right here. You know what I re really realized realize today is that there's one more buttonhole to do. Oh no, there's, there's um, three more buttonholes to do on this. <laughs> The collar stand and the cuffs. All right, so here we go. Let me give you a better look at what's happening here. Oh, I didn't even pin this side, so we'll pin that. The longer side's the back. So I guess you could not clip this side if you didn't want to, the, the back seam. All right, let's get this under here. Ugh. All right, 
put my left my pin cushion over there. Make sure this is pressed open right here. You don't want like a little um, pleat on the right side where we're doing this. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let's turn that under there. Get those threads in there. Like turn that, put that turn back kind of deeper in there. All right, so right here, you want to make sure that this is nice and smooth because it, it you can easily get a little pleat right there if you don't. All right. Um, you may have wanted to understitch this edge or edge stitch it. That would be fine too. I'll, I think I'm going to go back and edge stitch mine. I think it'll look kind of cool if I do. All right, so let's start. Let's just start in the middle of the back. Why not? And we're going to go, um, let me check my bobbin. Oof, that's not enough bobbin. Thirteen? Just on the placket or a total? But that's about, that sounds about right. I hate to do this, but I'm gonna have to wind a bobbin. Otherwise, we're gonna be stopping in the middle. I'm sorry. Wham! I usually have two spools and then I just keep one always winding, you know? This thread is so skinny. All right, might mute myself so that you can't hear me while I do this. All right. Got to rethread, and now we're ready though. We have enough. Glad I checked. I would have been like, yay, we're almost done. Oh no. Yeah, that's it, it, shirts like, it, and if you do pockets, two on the cuff. Collar stand. What's your spacing? Do you do like three, about three ish inches, two and three quarters, or something like that? If they're really small buttons, though, yeah, you got to do like even more. All right, now we're ready. Let's do it. That wasn't too bad. Oh, except that I'm about to run out of thread here. Oh my goodness. Dang. How'd you guys let me re-thread this without putting my spool back? <laughs> that wouldn't have been fun. I would have ran out of top thread. Okay, oh my gosh. Why are you hooked on everything? You don't like the odd number? <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to either add one or take one away on that center front, huh? Is that possible? Will that be hard? Are the buttons very big? I have so many questions. Oh, sorry. That's 
why I don't sew with my left foot. Button chat. Oh, well, you can, Terry, we're still in the middle of it. All right, here we go. It's pretty fun this is a facing. You really could do something fun, like Dolan was saying. Like, what if you did like a, a navy blue linen, but then you did like a, a blue and white like ticking as your, as your facing and maybe your under collar. That would look kind of cool. All right, let's get this hemmed here. And now I'm just gonna turn at the hem right here. Right? I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. So that bugs you. You might not like this. You're going to add one. They're smaller. Yeah. All right. And so now we're getting up here at the vent. And so I've pushed my seam allowance towards the back. And so we're going to go above, like up to here, right here. <clears throat> and so let me show you where my seam is. The seam ends right here. We're gonna go up to here and we're gonna go straight across and then straight down. And I try and put my vent like flat and ma matched up so it's really nice and flat and consistent and you know, looks nice and squared. Here we go, like this. And then we're gonna go down this side. I've been sewing so much linen on that shirt lately that uh, this is this fabric isn't as well behaved. It's kind of funny. All right, and then same thing. Now we're gonna turn the corner here, and so see right here. This is what I didn't catch by turning the corner. But look at how nice and clean that looks. Like, see, there's just like a it just it looks completely seamless. Oh, I never use the pattern guide either. Mainly because I don't ever look at what button size they told me to buy. I just use what I have. And their spacing is gonna be based on whatever your button size is. And I've also I can tell sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, don't, don't, you don't want that first button way up there. Like my archer's kind of funky, a couple of my archers. And I, I don't know if I followed her guide or mine. I'm pretty sure um, I just went rogue at the time, so. Three and a half. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I agree with Libby. <laughs> I agree. I agree with Libby. <laughs> I'm always like, wait, I thought he had a, a baby and a preschooler. Is the baby a toddler now? <laughs> she probably is. I think it's a, a you have a preschooler and a, a, a toddler now. Thanks, Barb. Yeah, isn't it great? From Hearts Fabric. All right, so I don't want this to go past, so I'm gonna ooch it in a little bit. Turn at that hem. Again, we're at this vent again, just like this. My little diva. Go up. Let's get this turned under there. Straight across. You can do fun little things at the top of your vent, like stitching a triangle or um, contrast. Oh, see, I do think like this isn't flat. There we go. That's that's better. Oof! I barely caught that. All right. Turn. Number one client. <laughs> yeah. The 15 month old is not toddling it. Oh, okay. <laughs> How is she 15 months old? I thought it was just her. Oh, no, it was your older one's birthday. Okay. 
night, Danny. Have a good day. See you in a couple weeks, maybe. Oh, I didn't get this one quite in there. Let's tuck that little edge under there. Night, Mullen. Have a good one. Ms. On Demand. All right, we're getting back to the beginning here. There we go. Back stitch right there at center back. Ooh, can't even see it. That looks, that looks rare. All right, let's see how this looks. So, see how this transition looks here. They both, I thought they had both had their birthday in, in August, okay. All right. So, can you even see that? So see how it's seamless, it goes up, around. I can't really see it very well. Let's look at the other side. It's just kind of fun to do these little details. This one looks a little better. See? Straight across at the top and then down. And then when we get there, there we go. Miss Sassafras. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try this on really quick. Could use a little pressing at the hem, but that's okay. I'm going to try this on real quick. Three days apart. Ooh, yeah. Oh, okay. This is very interesting. Okay, I do think I need a button on here. Otherwise, it's gonna slip back. Look at that. What do you think? I think in a drapey linen, I could be really into this. So let's put the cuff on. Lady of the house. Okay, I, I actually can't do the cuff. Uh, it's too far away from my hand, so I'd have to do it before, but I like the bias cuff. Plaid matching on the sides. This is a little too much for me. I think in a linen, if it relaxed, it, I, I don't know. I'm looking at the, I think that the using this black line was a bad idea. I think that using this, this right here, it looks a little off center to me. Yeah, I think linen would be really great. See, my little hip tilt makes it look like maternity. <laughs> my hip tilt really pushes my belly out. It always makes me think I'm, it looks, makes me look like I'm doing that, you know? <laughs> but I'm not, I, this is my posture. We'll move around a little bit. It's so comfortable though. Like this is like so comfortable. Yeah, it might be a little stiff for this, Elena, you're right. Yeah, yeah. But 
That's nice. What Eliza saying? Autocrat unit. Drapery fabric. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rayon. Yeah. Actually, I think you have something there, Raquel. I know that they market this with a lot of linen in mind, um, but I think um, rayon, that would be a really good call. Oh, interesting, the Cornell, okay. I, I know, I know, Libby. I just think my hip tilt is gonna like really, you know, exacerbate that. Yeah, I think the proportions are great. I don't think I could make it a sudden sleeve very easily. I kind of want pockets in it. You know what I mean? These are my ash jeans, which are the skinniest jeans I get. It's, it's cute, really cute. It's so comfortable. I can't, I really can't stress that enough. It's really, really comfortable. I don't like uh, non sudden sleeves. What's great about this is that you have a button placket right here, right? So you can actually button it and it, there's some weight on the front to help hold the shirt down. So, cause this is my problem with non sudden sleeves is they do this, right? <laughs> um, and this, you could button it right here. That would help seat it down, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Silk cotton. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. It does it. It looks kind of funny when I'm sitting here, doesn't it? It's pretty wide. Really comfortable. Yeah, I think you would too, Fiona. I think it would look really great on you, though. Definitely marketed for your silhouette. Yeah, so I'm 5'4". Here's my pants right here. So I'll, I'll put my tank top in so you can see if I were to lift my arms up. It's going to show a lot, right? The vent, the height of the vent is at my top of my waistband. So I wouldn't want this any shorter, even, and I'm only 5'4", so... See you, Raquel. Have a good Thanksgiving, yeah. Linen and knee length. They have a lot of garments like that on their site, Shim. That would say it takes so much fabric. Holy moly. They have a lot of garments like that, though. Oh my gosh, Aisha. An FBA. No, there's no um, bus shaping, Eliza. None. It's flat. Yeah, e e exactly, Fiona. But there is a length and a shortened line. Yeah. So, so Eliza, look at that. You see how it's totally flat. And FBA, you there's no armhole or anything. I don't really think you would need one. It is what it is. It's one of those things where it is what it is. Look at that pleat on my back shoulder. I, I, I had to hate to say it, but I kind of like it. I'm gonna make this in one of my linens that I got. I still haven't even taken my other stuff out of the box, but I love seeing it so much. But I, right now I have a solid purple and a solid black, but I also have a window pane, a linen, like they sewed one in. I have a couple of those, those would work. Oh, I just want everything in it. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna go because I'm hungry. Um, and I won't see you next week for streams, but I, I will. Um, oh, really, Fiona? <laughs> the best fix for the tending, different fabric, totally. Rayon would be, I think, the best one in a linen. Yeah, me too, Shim. You like it, Heidi? Yeah, it's really fun, I like it. They sent us the most fun patterns in project. Oh my gosh, did I have my, um, I don't know if I had my um, Hearts Fabric um, sponsoring thing up all day. I feel terrible. 
The Hearts Fabric sent this to us. If you want to shop on their website, we have a little code here for 10% off. And um, they still have some of this fabric on there and same with the pattern. They have the both size ranges of this pattern on there. So yeah, thank you, Eliza. I have a lot to do before I leave. I'm a little bit like, eek. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, have a great week. I don't know what I'm streaming the week I come back. I better figure that out. What am I streaming when I come back? Let me look at my book. I might have it written down. I'm a planner. <laughs> like, I plan things ahead. So, let's see. Um... I don't have anything. This is November. I thought I picked December. I just wrote stream. <laughs> Not helpful. Um, these are all guild stuff. So I should stream this week and this week. This is Christmas week here. This right here would normally be our gift sewing stream week. Oh yeah, so this was the week I'm coming back right here. So we'll see, it may be two weeks then. Thanks, Margaret, I'll let her know. Yeah, it's her birthday tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah, Elena. <laughs> yeah, and I have the legato jeans as well. Um, and like I kind of teased yesterday, I did get, I, I got a few opportunities lately. Um, they're not all set yet, but that might keep me a little busy next year, which is good. So, like today's stream, leave a comment too. It really helps. I would totally sew those, Elena. I would totally sew those. I wanna try them out. Um, if you're in the guild uh, tomorrow, we have the Ask a Sewy Question show. It's a week early. Um, and then there's workshop on Saturday and a Zoom on Saturday afternoon. Um, and same with next Saturday as well. So I'll see you guys at those if you're in the guild and you're a journeyist or master group member. If you're an apprentice group member, I'll see you at Ask a Sewing Question Show tomorrow. So bring your questions, pin all of the new release patterns. I, there's, I think I sewed two of them since they came out. So that'll be fun. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. <laughs> I'm finding my little thingy. There it is. Bye. That didn't work. Bye.